Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel at Brush by Brandy. This week I'm excited to introduce you guys to the new fall color release from Dixie Belle, which is five colors in a fall theme. I'm going to be using them to update this plain pine chest that I picked up off my local Facebook marketplace. And this week we're going to really concentrate on techniques that you can use to bring interest to otherwise really plain surfaces. I've got a whole bunch of tricks up my sleeve, but we're going to start off first by sanding this top smooth because I want to use a wood stain top to bring interest to this piece. Some of the methods we're going to use are decoupage, raised stenciling, wax detailing, would you bend moldings. These are just a few tricks I have up my sleeve when I need to bring interest to otherwise plain surfaces. I just finished sanding this top with my surf prep sander and I want to show you guys a couple things. Pine is a very soft wood and so it sands away really quickly but that was a tough finish to get off. So what I used on my surf prep was an 80 grit paper. I need to now go over this with a 120 and a 220 grit. And that's gonna give me the smoothest surface because I need to clean this up, even though it's sanded and my finish is off. Um, and I need to be careful that I'm not getting swirl marks in my wood. If I'm getting swirl marks, it either means I've got some dirt on my paper, some buildup, which could be some of this here. Um, it could mean my grit is too high. Uh, it could mean also that my sander needs to be recalibrated and you can find videos for that over on YouTube. All right, now that my top is all sanded, I've gone ahead and covered it in a towel just to keep it protected while I continue to work on my piece. And the next thing I wanna do is take off these handles. These are pretty, I'm gonna reuse them. They need to go for a cleaning. So what I use is I bring these caddies out and I'm gonna go ahead and put my hardware in here so that it stays together while I'm working on my piece. Let's talk about screws. All right, so you need to have the right kind of screwdriver to get your hardware out. This is a more modern piece, probably made sometime in the 80s or 90s. So my screws are a Phillips head. And so I can use my screwdriver. I could also use my screw gun for this. Um, my favorite screwdrivers are these here. These are six in one screwdrivers that I get from Home Depot. And I love them because I can take the tip off and I can flip it around and it's got Phillips and flathead all in one screwdriver. So these are really universal. I've got at least 10 of these floating around my workspace. Let's go ahead and get this hardware taken off. All right, so I'm going to use my screwdriver on this one. I've got my Phillips head, and what I do is I usually just loosen them enough until I can come back with my fingers, and then I can just turn the screw, and those are going to go in my caddy. I try to not soak the screws. A lot of times when you soak screws for cleaning them, they will have a tendency to rust. So those are going to go in a separate hole, and then my hardware will go in its own hole, and those are going to stay in my caddy. Okay, I've got my hardware all off and this piece is in pretty good condition, but it is dirty. It's gross. So I'm going to need to give this one a good scrubbing. I'm going to use steel wool on this one. So I'm going to clean this one with Dixie Belle White Lightning and give it some good scrubbing inside those crevices. And then as far as repairs, there's not a lot that it needs, except because this is pine, it tends to ding really easily. So I've got a few spots here that I just need to sand smooth so that my paint finish goes on smooth. Some of this I might leave for character because I do love that because pine dings so easily, it makes beautiful distressed and rustic finishes. For my cleaning process on this one, I've got out, of course, my rubber gloves because this is disgusting. And then I have my white lightning cleaner from Dixie Belle that I've mixed into a spray bottle. I'm going to go ahead and douse the front of this very liberally in my white lightning cleaner. And then I'm going to use some steel wool on this one. I'm just going to scrub it to get all the dirt and gunk out of these crevices. It has quite a bit. So my general rule of thumb is I usually don't clean my pieces on the inside until the end of my process. And that's because I'm going to continue to get dust and things inside the piece. And so I save that for the end and then I give it a good vacuuming when I'm conditioning my drawers and things. With my piece all nice and clean, I want to make sure that I rinse away my cleaning residue with water. So I'm going to do another pass over my entire piece using just water. And this would apply no matter what type of cleaner you're using. You always want to make sure that you rinse away your cleaning residue. Before I get to rinsing that, to wiping that back, this is what my rag looked like when I was done wiping back all the dirt from my last pass with the cleaner. This one was dirty, but I also think there's a little bit of bleed through going on with this one. While I've been cleaning this piece, 
I've been kind of mulling over what I might want to do with my finishes. It just so happens that I have some brand new products from Dixie Belle and I know that I want to incorporate at least some of them. So we have a new color release. Uh, these are our fall colors from 2021. This is called Pumpin Pumpkin Spice, which is a rich, kind of an orange color. Cashmere, which is this fun creamy white. That's really classic. Latte, which is a nice warm beige. Juniper, which is this awesome, awesome green. We've needed an olive green in the line for a long time, so I'm super ecstatic for that one. That's probably my favorite color in the new release. And then Merlot, which is this beautiful wine red color. I noticed in cleaning this piece, we've gotten to know each other really well. And it's got a lot of character, including some of these dings and dents and all these things in the pine. I'm going to leave them. I actually think they're really cute. I think it gives it character. Um, when I'm designing a look for a piece, I try to not fight what's going on with the piece already. I want to play up the characteristics that my piece already has with it. And then I'm going to choose cashmere, which is a nice classic creamy white. I think the dark waxes will stand out nicely against this and we'll get a really classic finish. So it's very important, important when you're going through a piece to kind of it ex, uh, assess its characteristics. And one of these, I know that this piece is pine, which means it has pine knots. Pine knots are very oily. They're notorious for bleed through. And bleed through is when the tannins, which are the oils from your woods, can seep through the porous paint and it can discolor your paint. Every time I use white, I always know that I want to prime. It saves me on coats of paint in the long run. Um, and also whites are going to be more likely to show discoloration than say a darker color would. So in this case, I know that I want to use Dixie Belle Boss, which is a stain and odor blocking primer. I'm choosing Boss in gray. It is my favorite of the Boss um, colors. It comes in gray, clear, and white. And I'm going to apply it using my Dixie Belle Mini, which is my favorite brush in the line. So I'm going to dampen my brush a little bit and Boss goes on just like a paint. I'm gonna give myself two coats of this Dixie Belle Boss, and that's gonna give me a beautiful base for my paint to lay on top of. I wanna make sure that when I'm laying my Boss on, I lay it on as smooth as possible because this is the base for my finishes, and anything that goes on in this coat will show through in my final finishes. We are 24 hours later and my Dixie Belle Boss has had a chance to dry and now I'm ready to come back and go ahead and put a base coat of my paint on. So I've got my paint out, my Dixie Belle Mini. Um, I'm going to give it a light sanding with my um, Dixie Belle Sanding Sponge. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Mr. Bottle and I just lightly moisten my surface and that just helps my brush glide better over the Dixie Belle Boss. I'm going over gray with a shade of white and I do not expect to get full coverage. This is Dixie Belle Cashmere, which is from the new fall color release. And I do not expect to get full coverage on this coat. I just want to get a nice, even, clean base coat. So I'm going to brush it on. I'm trying to get my coverage as even as possible, making sure that I smooth out any brush strokes, watching for drips, because I do have this um, molding that's around the center of my drawer and paint and water can tend to gather there. So I want to make sure that I always come back and clean up any drip marks from places like that, making sure to get my brush edges. I need to kind of dig in because I did leave some of those little pock marks and the little distress marks in the pine. So I need to make sure that I get my paint down into those. And so I just kind of dig my brush in there a little bit, smooth my brush strokes out. Nice, long, even brush strokes. I have a fairly light hand when I paint. That's something to consider if you're a heavy handed painter to try to work on smoothing your brush strokes out just by feathering your brush over the top of them with a light hand. Getting the bottom of my drawer, 
feather those in. All right, so this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. We'll come back tomorrow and give this all a second coat. Here's my piece once I've got my paint all laid on. It did take me two coats to get full even coverage of this nice creamy white over my gray primer, um, but it looks beautiful just with the base of the white on there. The next thing that I wanted to do to add some interest to this otherwise pretty plain piece is add a raised stencil up the sides. So I went ahead and placed my stencil on the side of my piece. I used a little bit of spray adhesive on the back to make it tacky. My favorite spray adhesive to use is Super 77 by 3M. Um, it just leaves a nice light tack to the back of my stencil. I stick it to the side of my piece and then I'm going to use Dixie Mud and the thingamajig tool and I'm going to scrape over the top of my stencil a layer of Dixie Mud. You'll see when I remove the stencil that this leaves a raised textured design of the side of my piece. And then I can go ahead and paint over top and it's gonna look like a raised wallpaper almost up the sides. Raised stenciling is a nice way that you can add interest where there isn't any. So these sides are pretty plain. Um, I love that it's it can be uh, classic and subtle if you want it to be, or you can wax over the top or use a glaze over the top. Um, or different paint techniques and make it stand out even more. So it can be as subtle or as bold of a technique as you want it to be. In this case, I chose to actually leave the pure white of the Dixie Mud against the creamy cashmere color. I went ahead and sealed it in clear coat and just used some dark waxes to bring out the raised stencil detail. I just lightly dusted over the tops of the raised stencil and it brought out the edges of the design. Um, so you'll see that in my final photos. Here's how it looks when I pull that stencil away. It's super pretty, you guys. I love doing this raised stencil detailing. Um, and then I'm gonna lightly sand it with my Dixie Belle sanding sponge, and here I'm going over it with a layer of satin clear coat. Even if I decide to paint my raised stencil, I always seal over the top because um, Dixie Mud can reactivate when you brush it, and so the sealer keeps the mud protected. Let's decoupage the drawer sides. The drawer sides are another really plain face on this piece, and so I'm gonna add interest to them using decoupage, yet another method. This is a decoupage paper from Dixie Belle, and I'm just gonna use my satin clear coat. I'm gonna brush a piece onto my drawer sides. I have coated my drawer sides in a coat of Savannah Mist paint, and that's because this um, particular paper is a little bit translucent, and so whatever color is underneath, you're gonna see peek through my paper just a little bit. That Savannah Mist just adds a light blue gray tint underneath my paper, which ties in with my piece perfectly. I lay my paper into my uh, base of satin clear coat, and then I'm going to brush another layer of satin clear over the top of it. I'm going to repeat the same process down the rest of my drawer sides, laying a base of my satin clear coat, laying my paper on top of the satin, cutting it flush with the edge using a razor knife, and then coming over the top with another layer of satin clear coat. Just three sheets of paper did all six of these drawer sides. So one package of paper and I got through all six of these drawer sides, which is phenomenal. The design on this paper has kind of a nice fall floral look, which really ties into the stencil design that I used on the sides of this piece. It also has a kind of creamy white background, which ties into the cashmere color that I used on the body. So here I need to seam together the edges of my paper and this has a nice pattern repeat on it. So I'm able to just match up the edge to the edge on my existing sheet that I had already laid. I cut it flush with the edges and then go over it with a coat of satin clear coat and you can't even tell that that seam exists in the paper. For this step, I just recommend taking your time and matching up those edges nice and evenly, making sure your pattern is matching with both sheets of paper. That's gonna give you the best and most seamless design, but you can run this paper horizontally or vertically as many sheets as you want and the pattern will continuously repeat. So these drawer sides are just gonna peek out every time you open the drawers of this dresser. It's a pretty simple, classic color finish, but these little tiny details add a lot of interest. I always feel like with custom pieces of furniture, the details are where what really makes them stand out from commercially produced pieces. I'm working on this piece here and I love the color. I just am feeling like it's a little bit plain. I'm still gonna add some waxes and distressing, but I wanted to figure out what else I could do to kind of make it more interesting. So I'm gonna add some Would You Bend moldings. And I chose these here because I think it really fits the, si the style of my piece. And where I wanna place them is I'm gonna wrap them onto this corner right here. So Would You Bend I can heat and they'll become soft and I can put them anywhere. Um, and then I think I'm gonna put just some simple little keyholes right onto the front of my drawers here too. 
So because I'm deciding after the body of my piece is painted, I can definitely still add these, but I need to get them painted and caught up to the body of my piece. So I'm gonna throw them in here and go ahead and give them a coat of my paint, which I'm using um, Dixie Belle Cashmere from the new fall collection. And then we'll go ahead and apply these to the piece. So I got a coat of paint on my Would You Bend moldings and now my paint needs to dry, but actually I need to hit these with a heat gun anyways to soften them so that they'll bend. So I'm gonna also use that to dry my paint at the same time. So I'm gonna apply my keyhole moldings first. They're gonna be a really easy application because my surface is pretty flat, might not be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty close. So I'm just gonna take these. I shouldn't even really need to heat them. I'm gonna find center, um, put a little bit of my tight bond quick and thick adhesive on the back. like to make sure I cover all the parts of the back, but not too much excess that it squeezes out the side. And I like to take just a little, uh, kind of, this is just a beat up artist brush, and I'm just gonna clean up any glue that would have come out around the edges. It does dry clear, but I like those edges to be nice and neat. And then the other thing I like to do on these keyholes is to paint the inside of the keyhole um, to a dark color so it looks like shadow, like an actual keyhole would have. All right, this finish is all about adding interest to the piece, even though my paint finish is pretty simple. So I added some Would You Bend moldings. I've got a raised stencil on the side. I'm now gonna add a little bit of distressing just to bring out some of these moldings in the wood for the contrast between the paint and the natural wood. So I'm just gonna use my Surf Prep sander. I have an 80 grit sandpaper in here. It could be a lighter grit, but this is just what I already had on my sander. And then um, I did turn the speed down on my sander, um, just using the minus button, and that lets me have a little bit more control so it doesn't get out of hand too fast for me. And I'm just gonna ride the edge of this molding using my sander. All right, I have a drawer glide that needed a little bit of a repair. And so all I did was take the existing drawer glide and flip it because the other side of it is perfectly good. So even if your drawer glide looks a little worn on one side, don't think that you can't just flip it. This one is a match and the drawer works just fine with it flipped around. So the next thing I need to do is get a screwdriver into there, which we all know is never gonna happen. You can see if you try to get it in there, there's no way to get a screwdriver on there. So look at this cool little tool. This is made by Klein Tools. It's a little ratcheting screwdriver and you can just put a regular drill bit on there. The drill bit just magnets in and you can just ratchet the screw right back in and reattach my drawer glide even in the tiniest space. Now my drawer glides are all repaired. All right, another way that I'm gonna add some interest to this really simple plain finish, uh, really simple paint finish, is I'm gonna use waxes. Um, so I'm using contrasting waxes. I've got out my Dixie Belle Besting Wax in grunge gray and black. And I'm gonna use those. I've got a natural bristle artist brush, a little bit fat one, and then a skinnier one to get some details. Um, and I'm gonna start out just dipping into my grunge gray. And I'm even gonna take that off a little bit. Oh, barely any wax on that brush because I'm doing this on white. It really takes such a little amount of wax for it to show. And I'm just going to hit along the edges of this drawer and I'm just kind of using a swirling motion. This is raw paint. It is unsealed. 
Um, if you feel a little bit nervous about adding your waxes and you want more control, you can do that by adding a clear coat before you put your waxes on. So I'm going to swirl around the outside of my drawer, getting kind of lighter as I move to the center. And then I'm just going to take a rag and I'm going to buff that out. And it's going to work it into my paint and just leave this little bit of a shadow around the outside of my drawer. Now it seems like you wouldn't notice that, but by the time I go around the outside of this box and then this box here, I'm going to come um, to a look like I have on these bottom two drawers. And you can see it just adds a little bit of shadowing effect, a little bit of aging, and then I'm going to also do it around my keyhole here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish just swirling a little bit of that gray wax around the outer edge of my drawer. And then once I have that done, I can take a little bit of my black wax. Again, very little. I'm using the same brush, um, barely any on my brush. And I'm just going to hit some of the very corners that I might want especially dark. And I'll just darken those with a little bit of black wax. That just adds a little bit of contrast to the gray. With my body all complete, it's time to now pay attention to this otherwise really plain pine top. So how would you add some interest to a plain pine color piece of wood? I'm going to use two colors of Voodoo Gel Stain. So in this video, I am using Up in Smoke and Tobacco Road. I did end up coming back and trading out the um, Up in Smoke for Black Magic. So my final colors on the piece that I used were Black Magic and Tobacco Road. But here you're going to be see me doing it in the gray and the brown instead. So what I did is I just streaked on a little bit of my Voodoo Gel Stain to the top of my piece in alternating streaks. And then I'm just going to brush it together using one of my Dixie Belle brushes. Voodoo Gel Stain is a water-based gel stain, and so I love it because it takes to wood really lightly. It's going to give you some nice soft colors to it. It's not as opaque as um, No Pain Gel Stain, which is the other gel stain in the Dixie Belle line. Um, it's just going to give you the nice softness so I can still see the grain and all the pine knots through my stain. I felt like this was still too light when I was done, so changing over to the black and doing a second coat really helped get me the look that I wanted, which was this look here. It's nice and rich against the white body. My hardware was cleaned well and I spray painted it in a coat of flat black and then gave it a coat of satin lacquer and that finished those off. And now this piece is done and ready for staging. Of course, I'm going to stage it for fall because this was done in the fall color release with cashmere. Um, but I think it's beautiful. I took this plain pine chest and this week we exercised a lot of different ways to add interest to otherwise plain surfaces. I think it really works on this piece. You can find links for everything I used in this video in the description for this post. As always, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.